Hello and welcome to the T3 Handicapping YouTube channel. I am Chris from T3 Handicapping and I am here to bring you a new video series that we are calling Bet Labs. So one of the things that uh, I've found uh, as I've continued to work on handicapping uh, and building our system is that there's a lot of information out there about handicapping and how to pick winners and there's a lot of different ways to do it and a lot of different ways to do it and ultimately you're still going to be wrong more than you are right and so what i wanted to do is i wanted to provide a different kind of resource you hear it all the time at the track i'm a great handicapper i'm just a lousy better and so this video series is going to be dedicated to looking at different betting strategies and methodologies and seeing if we can turn a profit i'm going to be just as much learning in this as you are uh, this is my chance to experiment um, take different strategies use them over a series of a couple days recap them in these videos um, and see if maybe we can all become better betters here in this uh, in this horse racing game that is so tough to master so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into it now if you want to get more of these bet lab videos make sure that you go ahead and like and subscribe here on YouTube um, but we have a lot of other ways that you can connect with us uh, first and foremost t3handicapping.weebly.com one of the things we started about a month ago is we're just giving out all of our picks for free every day Saturdays Sundays Mondays it doesn't care if we handicap the track we're giving it to you for free you can go on to our website there's a tab that says daily picks you can find it right there so t3handicapping.weebly.com you can also find us right here on YouTube like I said, like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot of updates on these uh, Bet Lab experiments. So make sure that you like and subscribe so you can follow along and see if there's anything you want to implement in your betting. Um, you can certainly like and follow us on Facebook, T3 Handicapping Horse Racing. And you can follow me on Twitter as well at Handicapping T3. Now, one of the things that I want this to be is I want this to be a learning experience for all. So I know we've got a bunch of subscribers out there. We've got a bunch of viewers out there. Um, if you're someone who has a strategy that you've implemented, a system of betting um, that you would like to have me uh, utilize and backtest and go through, um, certainly happy to do that. I want this to become a place where people become sharper betters. Um, and that's myself included. I don't have all the answers. I'm still improving as well. Um, but I hope this gives you some new ways of looking at how to bet. Uh, and I'm hoping that we can bring in some great voices because I know there's a lot of smart handicapping uh, and betting experts out there. Uh, let your voice be heard. So if you have anything, uh, don't be afraid to uh, comment down below. Uh, with any type of strategy or system you'd like me to uh, dive a little bit deeper on, uh, or you can certainly reach out to me any of these ways as well. Let's go ahead, though, uh, without further ado, and let's actually get into our first bet lab uh, that we're going to do. So here in episode one, and, and really our first couple episodes, uh, I'm going to stick with this one called the Winogram, which is something that I created. Uh, it's a parallelogram which is where the name comes from, and it's based on win betting. So that's why it's called this. Um, I developed this strategy myself as a bankroll management tool. Um, and basically, as you can see here, um, we've got a parallelogram divided into two triangles. One triangle represents the horses that you're picking, and the other triangle represents your bankroll. Now, this is episode one, so we're going to go over this. Uh, but one of the things that's going to be really important is that I'm going to come back at some point and give an update on how this is going. So I'm going to track um, Winogram and see how it does before I move on to anything else. I want to see how this one does. And then we'll come back at the end. We'll take a look at ROI. We'll take a look at win percentage, how things went. Uh, it could be really good. And some of these experiments, just like in science, are going to go horribly wrong. And that's OK. Sometimes you learn just as much from the stuff that doesn't work as the stuff that does. But you can never take a one day sample in an experiment. I think you have to look at it over time. So this is sort of the initial day, and then I will provide recaps uh, as I continue to implement this strategy to see how we're doing, um, and we'll kind of provide an overall ROI with each update. So, <coughs> excuse me, here's how the winogram works. Uh, essentially, as I mentioned, you've got the horses in the triangle that is right side up, and you've got your bankroll in the uh, triangle that is upside down. Um, and what you can see here is you split this chart that was a parallelogram with a line down the middle to make two triangles um, and you actually divide it into three parts now what you'll notice is that the green dots are 50 percent 
So 50% of my horses will be down in this bottom part. These are my uh, lowest opinions. And then 50% of my bankroll will go to the horse that's up here. So 20% of my horses will get 50% of my bankroll. 30% of my horses will get 30% of my races. And then 50% uh, of my horses will get only 20% of my bankroll. So we're looking here at a money management strategy that allows you to play your biggest opinions most effectively. Now, one of the things that's really important is when you start your day to go ahead and put this in. Today, I had a lot of work meetings. Um, so when I put this together at the beginning of the day, I was playing Indiana Grand. Um, I put in my opinions early. Um, and this will go into a little bit more detail as to what happens. So um, in this top one, my top, uh, remember, I get 50% of my horses I'm sorry, 20% of my horses taking 50% of my bankroll. Today at Horseshoe, Indiana, there were eight thoroughbred races, or at least there were supposed to be. Um, so over eight races, that meant that I could basically have uh, one horse up here. I could es essentially have three horses here, and then I could have four horses down here. Um, those were my maximum numbers. There's no requirement when I use this strategy that I play all of them. Um, so you can see actually as I went through and I handicapped the races, I actually had four that fit into this category and only three that fit in here. So I put this one in, but this was only an alternate um, if I couldn't play one of these because I still think that within this, one of the things you need to be able to do is pass races when there isn't value. Now, one of the problems I did run into today is that I was in work meetings, so I had to put in all these bets ahead of time um, and was not able to actually update as odds came. I had to use the profit lines on Twin Spires um, to help guide my opinions. So let's just take a quick look at, at basically what I put in here. On Wednesday, 525, my most likely winner at odds of greater than even money. Now, the this horse happened to go off at even money. If this horse was going to go off below even money, I would have just scrapped this bet, and I just wouldn't have played a top-tier bet because um, that was the only horse that I really had up here. Um, the other horses, you know, race two um, maybe would have been up there, but I, I still had some question marks there. Uh, race three, I think, was another one where I, I was kind of interested Um in, a, in the two horse, but uh, regardless, this was my main play for the day. So my most likely winner at odds of greater than even greater than or equal to even money, I was going to use in this spot, and I was going to use $25, uh, which was um, I used a $50 bankroll today. I want these videos to be available to the small player, just the same as the big player. If your bankroll is 5000 then you, know, you can make it bigger. Um, now, this is a daily bankroll, not a total bankroll, just uh, to be clear. Um, if you only have $50 to spend on the horses, this is probably still too big. Um, you only want to be using a small percentage of your bankroll on a daily basis. Um, but here you can see, um, in this situation, I had odds rank overlays. So I basically took a look at these horses here. Um, race two, it was just the number two. That was the only one I was really interested in using. Um, race three, it was the number two if he went off at higher than five to two or the one or the six that went off at seven to two. I kind of looked at numbers there um, just to try and figure out where they would go. I This one I ended up getting a really short price on. Um, I didn't have to circle this one because it was the only one that I had the option of. If I were playing this on a Saturday and I didn't have anything going on, I would be monitoring these odds boards and I would be adjusting accordingly. Um, how you pick these winners is really up to you. I would. This is where your handicapping expertise is. This is not a handicapping video. This is a betting video. Um, so you can see here, uh, obviously today uh, did not go well. Um, my non-favored price plays, sorry, I should mention that as well, down here in the bottom. So these are any horses that were over 5 to 1, and I used the morning line as my guide. Um, I think the 9 actually ended up going off like almost co-favored um, in this race here. So uh, you wouldn't, if you were playing this live, you would have probably scratched this horse um, off of that list because the horse was taking some significant juice and I think ended up going off about 5 to 2, uh, which just wouldn't have been good value. But let's assume... Um, because it's the way that I played my cash today. Um, let's just assume that I got all of the things that were here. Um, you look at this, and obviously, uh, like I said, some days these are going to go really well, and some days they're going to go poorly, and that's okay with me. Like I don't need things to go really well all the time. This is about becoming a better, better. And so 
uh, sometimes losing can help me learn that just as much as winning. Uh, here's what happened today. Uh, with this, um, one of the key things is that if your favorite horse wins, uh, you'll notice that you're using half of your bankroll on this one horse. So if this horse wins, in theory, you should be playing on house money for the rest of the day. These horses are all overlays, so if you can string a couple of these together, you can likely recoup uh, this even if you lose it. And then really it just takes one or two of these horses to win um, to make this whole thing uh, profitable. So I think by doing this, you've really given yourself several outs, uh, which I think is key as a horse player. Now what you'll notice here is that we had an overwhelmingly uh, poor performance day. So um, started in race one, this horse was not a runner at all, just terrible. Um, race two, uh, I believe actually the horse dropped under odds, so normally I would have cut that out, so that would have saved $5. Um, but I didn't. I played the $5 today, so I gave it the red X that I deserved for placing a losing wager. Race three, I came back, um, and I played the number one, the number two. Um, in race three, uh, I believe it was the number two that won uh, that race, but he was, again, a short price horse, so um, I lost that one as well. Race four, th this was the one that hurt today. Um, I came into it uh, really liking the number three. And if you want to go back and watch the replays at Horseshoe Indianapolis today, go back and watch race four. Um, I think you can see pretty quickly why my horse that was even money that I really liked did not. Uh, I think he ended up finishing third or, or maybe even fault, uh, faltered uh, to fourth or maybe got up for second. I can't remember exactly. Like I said, um, I was busy in work today, but that was the one race I did get to watch live because it was my biggest opinion. Um, the horse went off even money, and the horse ran a, a decent race after getting just absolutely crushed um, at the opening of the race and, and dropping way back off the pace. I anticipated him to maybe even be on the front, um, so I lost that wager. If that wager goes differently, the day goes differently, frankly. Uh, race five, um, like I said, this horse got bet way down to favoritism when I went back to check the charts after. I would have canceled this bet as well. Uh, and again, like you may find that within this, you set up $50 worth of bets, and you may only play 25 or you may only play two, and that's okay. Um, you know, you still have to look for value here where you can. Um, after race number five, uh, race number six, I did have a bet in on the number 10. He got absolutely crushed down to favoritism uh, and won like a favorite should win as the rain started to pour. My $5 win yielded only $8.50. So not the kind of return that I want from these odds rank overlay uh, type horses. You want to see these horses, generally speaking, paying in the 9 to $10 range. Um you know, just a, a hair below what you would expect from these horses down here. So uh, he got bet down. It didn't go so well to plan. Uh, at the end of the day, it was pretty rough. I, th I was down uh, 38 50 today, uh, but horse racing is not a daily sprint. It's a grind. So I'm going to take that minus 38 50 um, and I'm going to move it on to tomorrow and I'm going to try this again. I'm going to come back to this again and, and see if we can yield a little bit better results. If at the end of our experiment, this is a terrible strategy, well, that's just fine too. Um, we've learned something there. So you will see uh, the two red lines there, by the way. Uh, my alternate race, I did not play um, because I was out of plays and I did not play race eight because after race number seven, um, they ended up canceling or after race number six, they ended up canceling uh, all of the cards. So I didn't have an opportunity to play my last three dollars. Uh, ended up giving up forty-seven and returning eight fifty uh, for a total return of minus thirty-eight fifty. But we'll be back for more. Now, if you want to follow along with how the Winogram does, uh, make sure that you like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see other betting strategies experimented with, um, kind of standard models that we can put to the test over a course of several days at different tracks um, to help you become better betters, just go ahead and mention that in the comments. Uh, how do you like to bet? How do you like to make decisions? Um, especially when it comes to win betting, I think that's a great place to start. So how do you make your decisions on win betting and, and how do you allocate your funds? I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to uh, run your strategies through the bet labs and see if we can all become better betters because of it. So uh, thank you for tuning in again, like and subscribe. Continue to go to our website. Remember, all our picks are free now. 
Um, you just go to t3handicapping.weebly.com, go to the daily picks up blog page, and you can get the picks daily. Sometimes I update for scratches when I'm when I have time. Sometimes I don't, um, but at least it gives you a good barometer somewhere where you can get your picks from. Use one of our betting strategies to see if you can make some cash. So cash those tickets, like and subscribe, and thank you uh, for all your support of T3 Handicapping. Good luck.